So starting off, 3.15. Now, this is the last time I will write the whole word, simultaneous e equations. It is now going to be called SE. All right. So it's worth three credits. It's an internal. It'll be a test. Um, and you will have 55 minutes to an hour to do it, which will be plenty of time. Okay. Very simple test. Not simple, but easily able to be got. Okay. So we're going to look back at solving equations. How do we know whether we're going to solve an equation or not? What's the key giveaway that tells us we're going to solve an equation? An equal sign. Good. If we've got an equal sign, it's 99% likely we are trying to find an answer to something. All right. When we have one variable, they can be really complicated or really easy, or well, you'll remember them way back here. One variable, all right? You need one equation to solve it, one piece of information. That piece of information can be x equals 2, or it could be an equation you're required to solve to find that x equals 2, all right? So that's with one variable. If we've got two variables, then we need two pieces of information, right? So we either need to know what one of them is and an equation to put that into, that can be enough, or we need to know two pieces of information that we can solve simultaneously at the same time. Use both of them to help us to find the answers, all right? So we've got three different methods for doing this. The first method we taught you way back. So the first method is to draw a graph. All right, it's pretty much what the calculator does. It draws you a graph and it finds out where the intersection is behind the seats. All right, so if you had x equals 2 and x plus y equals 5, the graph would look somewhat like x equals 2 is the line that goes through there x plus y equals 5 is y equals negative x plus 5, so through 5, and da, 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 like that, right? So when it's 2, we can work out that y is 3, right? That's a pretty easy sort of looking one. It's not really any problems. We don't need a graph to do it. I was just showing you that that is what we're doing. We're finding that point of intersection, which is the solution to two equations, all right? So... That one, that's a pretty easy way of doing it, and yep, we can use our calculator, put the two equations in, and find the point of intersection. Or, we've got two algebraic methods. The second method is called solving by substitution. Alright? So obviously what this one is saying is you're putting something into something else. It can be nice and simple, like our example there. x equals 2, x plus y equals 5, so 2 plus what equals 5, y equals 3. All right, really, really simple like that. Or it can be a complicated one like the sort of ones you were learning to do in the last two years. So you might have it like x equals 5y minus 2, 3x plus 4y equals 8 and this year you won't necessarily get nice whole numbers all right so it's likely you'll get your key numbers so i'm not even trying to get whole numbers i'm just putting numbers up and hoping this works why wouldn't it work what possible reason might it be that this might not work i might not get an answer if we go back to here what might be the case Piers? they're parallel all right same will give us an answer. The answer will be that any points will work on it. All right. But if they're parallel lines, then I won't ever get an answer out of it. So I'm pretty well hoping that this won't be parallel, which I can tell pretty easily isn't. Gradient here is a fifth. Gradient here is negative three over four. Not the same gradient. There's going to be an answer where it is. I have no idea just at the moment, and I'm doing it algebraically at the moment. Um, so what I'm going to do is this says, this is what x equals, 
all right? In these two equations, this is x as well, so therefore that is the same as that. So we can substitute. We call this 1, we call this 2, funnily enough, and we substitute the one that says something equals into 2. So we get 3 bracket 5y minus 2 bracket plus 4y equals 8, and we solve that for y. Okay, so we've got 15y minus 6 plus 4y equals 8. We've got 19y equals 14y equals a lovely number of 14 over 19. Right, perfectly wonderful number. We don't have x, so we go back to where it says x equals this, and we substitute in. You can substitute into either of them, but... The one that says x equals is the easier one. x equals 5 lots of 11 over 19 minus 2. All right, so that's 55 over 19 minus 38. No, I didn't. Okay, now that's made it harder because I don't know my 14 times tables. 5 times 14 is 70 minus... 38, that's easier, is 32 nineteenths. So x equals 32 over 19. Okay. Nice. Right, I don't want to change that from fractions. Why not? What's my reason for not changing that? They are perfectly accurate. All right, and as soon as I change that into decimal, it's going to go rabbiting on off my calculator and I'm going to approximate my answer. So for whatever reason, I'm going to leave these out of 19 especially if whatever I'm talking about is in multiple of 19 Then I'm going to get whole number answers if I leave these. So if I had 38 fried eggs, all right, or whatever, when I multiply my 38 fried eggs, I'm going to get a whole number, okay? I have fried eggs for breakfast, just in case you're wondering. Um, solving by elimination is our third method. I'm hoping that most of you have seen this before, these methods. Yeah? Okay. I do think some of you won't have. I know that in the um, 1 1 class last year you did a standard on this, but the others may not have. All right, so, yes. No, you can put it in the mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not even going to do this. This is just the, the practice behind it. We're going to do that in conjunction with the calculator. But for now, we're going to learn how to, all right? So we know what the calculator might do. With elimination, it's written in a different way. We use this one generally if we um, don't have a something equals. So we might have an equation that goes... 3x plus 2y equals 8, and 5x minus 3y equals negative 4. All right, these are going to be horrible answers. In fact, put it in your calculator and find out what we're going to get. I'm going to keep going, but find out what the answer is if you know how to put that in your calculator. The good thing about this particular style is it goes straight in your graphics calculator. This one does not. To be in your graphics calculator, we need AX plus BY equals C to go in our matrix. So we put 3, 2, 8, 5, negative 3, negative 4 into our calculator to find the answer. All right, and our simultaneous equations with variable 2. But we're not doing that, we're doing it by hand. All right, we want to know how it works. So what we need here is to be able to get rid of either x or y. So we're going to take multiples of these equations to do that. So we're going to pick on y because he's got littler numbers and I like to multiply littler numbers. So I want these both to say the same coefficient. So it's going to be 6. Therefore, I'm going to multiply this one by 3, everything, including the end, and this one by 2. All right? So if I multiply this one by 3, I get 1 times 3. 
I'm telling you what I'm doing because if I make a mistake then and I'm being marked, I can find out what that mistake is. All right, so we've got 9x plus 6y equals 24. And as I said, I'm going to multiply 2 by 2, getting 10x minus 6y equals a negative 8. All right, now I'm just going to add those together. So I've got 19x. I want these to be different signs. So if they had been the same sign, I probably would have multiplied one of them by a negative. All right, so 6y minus 6y is nothing. 24 minus 8 equals 16. So therefore, x is, oh, I seem to like over 19s today. 16 over 19. All right. Now the trickier part here is it doesn't say y equals, but we still just pick one or the other of them to substitute back into. So I'm going to substitute in purple in one again because it has nicer looking numbers. That's the only reason. If number two had nicer looking numbers, I would have picked it. Three lots of 16 over 19 plus 2y equals 8. So 2y equals 8 minus. 38, 57, 67, 73 over 19. All right, or minus this probably would have been easier actually in my head, but I wouldn't do this in my head, I'd do it on the calculator. So three lots of 16 over 19 means it equals 5 and 3 nineteenths. That was way easier. All right. Next one. All right. So 8 take away 3 is 5. Then take away 16 nineteenths. Leaves us with 3 nineteenths. Still easier. Okay, now we need to divide by 2. So y equals 2. And a half of 3 nineteenths is? I could tell we're very good at fractions. 338s. Yep. I know. I did that to start off with, but then I had to undo it again. So I thought I'd be smart and take the 3 whole away first and just do 5 minus 16 nineteenths. Three times, oh no, it's not three and. Good point. Thank you. Back to here. Trying again. That's three times. So now what did I have before? Somebody do it on your calculator, can you call me? Three times 16 over 19. Oh, you don't know five minus 10? No. This one here, I want. 48 over 19. <laughs> 8 minus 48 over 19. Okay. What's 8 minus 48 over 19? It's almost 24 over 19. So I'm going to do 8, 19, and 19. Three and 5, 19. I think so. 5, 19. 2 and 19. Must be 5 and something. Oh, yeah. Okay. So push five, five, nine, 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 n
even though you guys found my mistakes, which is great to have you here to do that, I would have found them because my last step in any solving is to check. Because if I don't check, I'm not using the answers that I've actually been provided with in the test. So my way to check is to make sure that I use these two numbers back in whatever equation I didn't use here. So I'm going to substitute in two. All right, so I'm going to put 5 16 19 into my calculator. All right, and then I'm going to minus 3 times 2 and 14 19. And I'm going to hope that that gives me negative 4. So the answer is not right. Somebody? It is right. Equals negative 4. We're good to go. So what that means is, I know I'm right. 